In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about baking geometry from Grasshopper into Rhino. We will start by discussing different forms of storing data within Grasshopper. So bear with me. Let's go to Component Palettes under Params Geometry and select a couple of BREP containers. So this, these are the parameter objects for containing BREP geometry. Let's also go under Input and select Panels so that we would be able to see the output. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Selecting the node, right-clicking, and choosing option Set 1 VREP, and then picking my box. As I did that, you can see that the panel says referenced rep. This is the, the, the referenced rep type um, represents that the object within here is stored in a volatile form. Volatile form or volatile data is automatically updated. This rebuilds the solution or your definition and up updates it automatically. So I'm just going to show you what I mean. So if I go to Rhino now and select the object that I have referenced, I can transform it, move it up and down. I can rotate it. I can scale it and do some weird stuff even. And as you can see, the object is automatically updated. It's green. It's still green. And the green preview represents that this object is, is in Grasshopper as well. This depends on the ID of this object. So as long as within Rhino, this object has this specified ID, which is associated or referenced in this um, parameter object, this container for breps, in our case, as long as that ID matches, Grasshopper will automatically update your definition, update this geometry from Rhino. So if I open another Rhino file where there, there, there is no object with the same ID, Grasshopper would not be able to collect data. So this container would become orange as the one below and it would say that it failed to collect data because it couldn't find that exact ID anymore. There is a way to make geometry within Grasshopper stored in a persistent or permanent form. So let's now right click on the second rep container again select set one rep i'm picking another box so again this box is referenced the same way as the first one let's right click on it and if i choose now internalize data if i just hover over this option you would see a short explanation which says make volatile data permanent and disconnect all sources. So what this does is that this option makes volatile data permanent. And uh, if I do that, you can see that the description in the panel has changed. Now it doesn't say that it's referenced geometry it just says that it's a closed breath what that means is that now when i select this object within rhino and modify it or even delete it it doesn't affect the geometry stored in grasshopper but i cannot select it within rhino now this box can be accessed and modified transformed somehow only within Grasshopper. Just for visual purposes, 
I'm going to go now to params, geometry, and select geometry. Parameter object can be a container for, for all types of geometry. If I connect it with BRAP, everything works fine. So this already is referenced. I, what I wanted to just illustrate again. Now let's say I selected this geometry. And you can see these two now overlapping because the shade of red is more intense. And if I right click on this one and also select internalized data, you can see this wire disappearing. So this also represents that this already has the information inside, it doesn't have to take it from another input. So it doesn't need an input for it anymore. Let's now go to baking. So I have here two boxes created, very similar to the ones we've seen before. But those ones were created within Rhino environment, and these ones are created in Grasshopper. So if I go to Rhino and try to select them, modify them in any way, I'm not able to because I only see here the preview of geometry. So it's just a rendering. It's not real geometry to, for me to select and manipulate. There are several ways to bake geometry in Grasshopper. If I select one of the components, the box, the first box, and right click on the component area, small dialog box pops up and I can choose option bake. Let's do that. And I wasn't able to do that because there was a problem, a program, this a command running within my Rhino. So I just click escape in my Rhino, activate Rhino window and click escape so that I stop the command and do it again. Right click and select bake. Now there's no problem. So by right clicking on the component and selecting bake, an attribute, a baking attribute dialog box opens up. And here I can choose some options. Let's say the layer I want to bake my geometry into. I could choose color here set by layer. I can choose some other options. And I can also choose group option. In this case, when I'm only selecting and baking one object, it doesn't make much sense to group it. But imagine if you were baking hundreds or thousands of objects, <clears throat> then this grouping option would, would prove to be very useful. Let's click OK. And as you can see, in Rhino window, I have my bread box baked. But if I choose to transform it within Rhino, you can see that it's no longer linked to the grasshopper file. So as soon as I baked it, it's now free from Grasshopper. It has its own ID, and it's not connected to, the, to this component that I have baked it from. Another way to bake is by, again, selecting the component or the object with geometry, and then using your wheel, your mouse wheel. So click your mouse wheel and you have this radial user interface open up and you can choose this egg icon representing bake. If I do that, you can see that there was no attributes dialog box open up. So I wasn't able to make any, uh, to, to, to assign any options or to change some options for baking. So this is called like a quick bake option when you actually don't need those attributes. And this would just bake geometry from Grasshopper into Rhino into an active layer, open layer, and um, by default, with default settings. Let's select, move it, side. If I wanna bake 
multiple objects. At once, I can select them and then right click on canvas and choose bake. And as you can see, again, no attribute box opened up. I want to undo this command. And if I want to undo bake, I have to undo it in Rhino environment. So activate Rhino window and choose undo or control Z. Now, if I go and have, let's say, prep container, select prep, con prep container and connect both of them using shift key. The preview overlaps because I'm creating a copy of these two boxes. If I now select this um, parameter object, vrep parameter, containing multiple objects and right click on it and select take option, I have the attributes dialog box open up. So now, Although I'm baking multiple, I have the attribute box open and I can assign certain options. So let's say I want to choose my layer and I'm going to choose layer baked, which is currently turned off. So as I bake this geometry, I'm not going to be able to see it immediately. And I'm also going to change the color not to be layers, uh, but uh, let's say purple. And I'm also going to choose to group these objects because it's, it's uh, more than one object and click OK. So notice that in my active Rhino window, I don't see any big geometry. I will minimize my grasshopper window and I will go and turn on the layer that I have just baked my geometry into. And as you can see, I have this, of course, overlaying with grasshopper preview the purple two purple boxes and they are grouped so if i select one of them you can see in the common prompt that it says it's two poly surfaces added to selection because they are both grouped i'm going to turn off my bake layer and i'm going to double, double click grasshopper title bar to enlarge it so this is the a, a way to bake multiple objects uh, with attribute dialog box within Grasshop. So I guess this is it for baking and see you in the next one.